Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Desert Tech. I'm Nick Young, the CEO. I wanted to reach out to you guys this morning and give you three tips to improve the accuracy of your SRS, HTI, or any other precision rifle that you might be shooting. The number one tip is to make sure that you have good qualifying match ammunition. Now, not all match ammunition is going to shoot the same in your rifle. So what you want to do is you, you find first a, a bullet weight that uh, is stabilizing inside of your barrel twist. And there's some online calculators for bullet stability that you can look at to, uh, to do your own calculations. Uh, you also want to look at uh, the uh, distance that the bullet has to jump from the case into the lands, that's the lead of your rifling. Uh, that should be, you know, 15 to 20 thousandths. If you're going much beyond that, it's going to hurt the accuracy. You also want ammunition that has the right recipe. So, you know, it's the bullet, the powder, the brass, the primer, you know, that combination. You know, it's kind of the voodoo magic that people don't really understand, you know, why it works. But essentially, if an uh, ammo manufacturer has found a good combination, it will, it should shoot good in, in all of the precision rifles that it's fired through. For us at Desert Tech, it's pretty nice because we're able to control the chambering, control the ammunition, so we can uh, do a really good job of making sure that those uh, function accurately together. Tip number two is to control the gases that exit the muzzle. So precision rifles, always have a, a match grade crown uh, essentially they're trying to give uniform dispersion as that the gases go outside of the barrel and the reason for that is if there's any uh, nicks or burrs or any kind of problems with the crown then it will cause more gas to exit one side than the other and it can cause the bullet to tip which is which is uh, also known as yaw you don't want any bullet yaw because it's like when you're throwing a football, if you throw that perfect spiral, you know, the ball goes really well. But if it's, uh, you know, teetering back and forth when you throw it, then with a bullet, it takes a couple hundred yards for it to restabilize back down and it's gonna hurt your accuracy and it increases the bullet drag. And so the performance is actually impacted negatively if you have any bullet yaw. Well, it's not just the crown though. Uh, that can really make a difference. So I, uh, a while back then I had a, a SWAT sniper buddy that bought one of our SRS's in 338 Norma and he got this new suppressor that he wanted to test out on his rifle. And so he called me up and he says, hey, do you got any 338 Norma ammunition? And it just so happened that I had a case of ammo that we had been using from a uh, bullet manufacturer, I'm not going to say who uh, the ammo manufacturer was out of respect for them, but we were testing it in our PSR uh, rifles that we were submitting uh, to the U.S. military back in the day. And the ammo shot really poorly. And we were getting five inch groups with this ammo like a shotgun pattern at 100 yards, which is pretty horrid. And so he asked me, do you got any ammo? I says, yeah, we got this ammo, but it's total crap. You don't want to shoot it. And he's like, you know, I don't really care what the accuracy looks like. I just want to uh, see how quiet this silencer is. And I says, okay, you know, I'll bring it out. So I went out to the range with him and he set up his, uh, his microphone up at the front of the muzzle to you know, take decibel readings off the suppressor and he asked me to shoot the rifle so he could you know manage that so i sat down and i shot his suppressed 338 norma with this garbage ammo and i shot one of the smallest five shot groups i have ever shot in my life it was under a quarter inch and it blew me away and i'm like well this ammo shot like crap back uh you know when we were testing it and so we pulled the can off shot a group sure enough five shot group put the can back on shot a group and it was you know one whole group again and it really enlightened me to understand the impact that the excess unburnt powder and the gases 
can have on the projectile as it exits the barrel. And so this spawned us to design our DTSS suppressor line. So the DTSS was designed to uniformly strip the gases off of the, the projectile to eliminate any bullet yaw uh, from happening as it exits the bore. So we got high speed video of the powder and the gases exiting our 338 Lapua SRS and it is crazy how much gases are still coming out of that barrel at the end of the 26 inch uh, length. So guys, muzzle devices matter. Stripping those gases away makes a huge difference. That's something nobody talks about. And the muzzle brakes, they work, they do help with that, but ideally a silencer works a lot better. So I've seen great results with muzzle brakes stripping gases, but even better results as we install you know, the DTSS silencer. And typically with our uh, DTSS silencer, you get a quarter minute increase in accuracy uh, on on our uh, SRS uh, rifles. We put the DTSS on our MDR. So our, our MDR's average accuracy is one and a half to one and three quarter MOA on average. You put the DTSS suppressor on there and it goes down to one minute of angle. Now our silencer isn't the only one that has you know, positive accuracy, uh, uh, you know, stripping gases and, and such, but we designed ours to be that way and it performs excellent that way and so you, know, you guys might know of other suppressors that, that improve the accuracy and you can tell you know everybody in the comments uh, down below uh, which other suppressors that you uh, would recommend but it's it's amazing guys like I kid you not it, I would shoot a silencer even if it didn't make it quieter because of those positive benefits of, of accuracy also guys, when you choose a muzzle brake for a precision rifle, you do not want it to vent gases upward. You want it to vent symmetrically, just left and right. The reason you don't want it to vent gases upward is because it will slingshot your barrel down and fling it back up for, uh, vertically, and you can get some bipod hop uh, from this. And we've high speed videoed uh, muzzle brakes, and you can, uh, have as much as three quarter uh, inches of movement of vertical whip in that barrel. So guys, if you're using a muzzle brake that vents gases upwards, you want to get rid of it. The only time that I use a brake that vents gases upwards is, is on a uh, auto loading rifle like the MDR where you know you want the maximum neutral muzzle control for rapid fire engagements. The third tip, guys, is to manage the parallax in your scope. If you are shooting the half inch groups and you want to be able to transition to shooting quarter inch groups, it is critical that you pay attention to the parallax in your crosshair. When I'm shooting for getting as, as when I'm trying to shoot as small of a group as possible then I'll actually roll my head around in a circle like that while I'm shooting and I do that so that I can find the very very center of the scope because I found that the parallax will open my group up if I don't do that and so those of you that have a really you know consistent stock weld you know you might be able to still get that same kind of consistency but to guarantee it, I highly recommend that you roll your head around between shots to find the center of the crosshair every time. Now, for those of you that don't know, you got the parallax uh, is pretty much the bending of the image and moves the crosshair back and forth on the target. The There is a very popular tactical scope it's kind of a budget scope that everybody likes and has is, is got a pretty good reputation. Uh, so we tested these scopes uh, for a contract one time and when we put the scope on the gun, went out to 100 yards and zeroed it, 
then we did a parallax test and with this scope adjusted at the 100 yard setting then we had one and a half minute of angle of parallax movement which was absolutely horrendous and we discontinued the use of that optic in any of our, our rifles uh, fortunately with the scope once you adjusted the parallax beyond 100 yards then the issue went away and there was no more parallax so guys just be mindful that it doesn't matter what ammo you have it doesn't matter what suppressor you have what rifle you have if you have a scope that has parallax then your groups are going to suffer thanks for watching guys let me know if you like these quick short videos and if you want us to keep putting them out please subscribe to our channel if you want more content. Thanks.